Please welcome to The Circle, Susan Carlin. Maybe if we can hit this news angle first, mm -hmm. um, following Senator Cory Bernardi's comments, that the burqa represents the repressive domination of men over women, which has no place in our society. What are your thoughts about that comment? First of all, it assumes that all the women that are wearing um, the burqa or the hijab or the niqab or any other mm -hmm. uh, clothing are doing so solely because the men in their lives are making them. And that's simply not the case. Certainly in some circumstances, in some countries around the world it is. So it's very much um, their own personal choice. It's something that they feel really good and positive about and I feel very uneasy about a man who probably has probably not spoken to any woman who covers her face telling us why she does what she does without having heard their opinion Can at all. Can you explain to me why you would choose to do that? I obviously can't speak entirely sure. on their behalf but I just know from the friends they just see it as being a positive expression of their spirituality they see it as something that it works for them it's not for me but if it works for them I think they should be allowed to dress how they want Do. Hmm. It's something that I guess they help. It helps them feel closer to their creator, and if it works for them, you know, I, I don't see it as an issue. Hmm. Susan, you're a lecturer in politics at Monash University in Melbourne. Tell us about your journey from Christianity to hmm. Islam. I was <laughs> raised in. I had a, a, a lovely upbringing with my family. I had a very positive experience at the church. So it certainly wasn't um, my conversion. Certainly wasn't out of a, a horrid rejection of the church or anything like that. I loved going to Sunday school, but it was when I was about 17, I just I started to wonder, why do I believe what I do? Is it because I think it's um, true, or is it just because I've been raised to believe this? And so I decided to look into other religions to, or, and no religion to see what made sense to me. Um, and of, but except for Islam, that was the last one on the list because I thought it looked sexist and outdated and barbaric and, and all the standard stereotypes. But I found, despite myself, when I, when I would stumble across information about Islam, that it actually surprisingly made a lot of sense to me when I stripped away all the politics and propaganda and sensationalism and actually got down to what the religion said about itself it was um, very beautiful very peaceful um, very logical and it just really resonated with me but it wasn't until I was 19 that I decided to become Muslim because I was worried about how my family and friends would react and it was a, a big decision but it got to the stage where I just knew, look, this is what makes sense to me and I can't live my life to make other people happy. This is what feels authentic for me. Mm. And so when I was 19, I, I changed religion. What do you think of the perception that Islam does try to control the expression of women? Mm, yeah, I think that's definitely a very common um, perception. And I think because it's something that I hear about so often and asked about, so my PhD is about the way Muslim women fight sexism in their own traditions and communities. Because the reality is, since the advent of Islam, we've had these amazing women who have been um, getting their rights through their religion, using their religion to get the rights that they want, such as the right to divorce and education and autonomy. Um, from the beginning of time right up until today, but very few people are aware there's this idea that Muslim women need to be rescued from themselves mm. and from their religion, from their culture. And what, it's so sad that it's seen that way because not only is it incorrect, it's, it's quite offensive um, to Muslims, to Muslim women and the community as a whole. Because if you look at lots of different religions, mm. all based on faith, yeah. um, but the dress is the one point of difference. Why do you think people have such an issue with the dress? It is interesting, isn't it? Because I think if we think of the way a nun traditionally used to dress in a habit, it's actually quite similar to the way a lot of Muslim women dress. But when we look at a nun, we see that as a positive, pious, she's very spiritual and good. And yet when we see a Muslim woman dress like that, people often feel a bit taken aback and oh, she's a fundamentalist and her husband makes her and she wants to change the rules of our country. So I think a lot of it is the, the cultural baggage that we bring to it. And I think if people could just talk to each other and realise, well, hey, actually, you're just like me. And you probably wear it for very similar reasons to the reasons that a nun used to dress that way. Is it so that you save the, the beautiful part of a female body just for the family? 
every Muslim woman will, woman will say they wear it for different reasons, but ultimately we do it as an act of worship. It's an act of faith of God. Mm -hmm. Like everything else that we do, the way we dress is, is an act of worship. And I've had women say that to me, this wearing a scarf is like a tangible reminder to them of their connection to God. Other women say, I do it as a feminist statement. I like the fact that when I go out, people aren't judging me entirely on how I look. And that. So there's a lot of different reasons that are in it, but I've never once had a woman say to me, I wear it because my husband makes me. It's far, far more common for a woman to say to me, my husband wishes I wouldn't, my parents wish I won't, I, w I don't wear it at home, and then when I get out, I sneak around the corner and put it on. Thank you so much, Susan, for joining Thank us for on The Circle. Me. Thank you for having me. Very informative and interesting chat. Please. Thank The last two questions, the lady over here. Right. Um, I've been told that women in Islam wear a veil because in this way men will treat them respectfully. Um, but I see the veil as a form of oppression because why should they have to cover themselves um, because of the weakness of men? Shouldn't they be treated with respect regardless? Could you please explain the veil and did Mary have to wear a veil? <laughs> Madam. Madam, your Bible says, your holy Bible says, you know, Paul, Paul, Paul is telling you that the woman must cover her head, that the woman who doesn't cover her, shave off her hair. Your Bible says that. The woman, the woman who bears her hair, says, shave them off, shave it off. That's what the Bible says. And you woman, the, your Bible says, she must not be allowed to open her mouth in the church. But that's your churches, they don't believe all that. And your people don't believe in that. So you are inviting trouble. You know, because of this, in America, in New York, no woman is safe after dark. No woman is safe in France. During daytime, women have been raped in the street, and people just walk by, looking the fun, say, oh, maybe they're enjoying themselves. Woman is being raped. No, no, I said, you are inviting it. Look, this modesty, the nuns, the nuns, you know, the nuns, Roman Catholic Church, nobody gives them a second look. If Mary, the mother of Jesus, came along, you won't give her a second look. But my dear sisters, those women on your gold coast, at Scarborough and all that with bikinis and tangas and G-strings, look. Sure. <laughs> it's attracting, <laughs> look, even an old man like me, I tell you, my God. <laughs> If, if I went there, I tell you, I'll be burning inside. <laughs> I'm telling you, look, this is the nature of man. God made us like that. The thing that allures man more than anything on earthly existence is woman. Do you know that? I don't know. The Quran says, the Quran says, Zuyina lil nasi hubbu shahwati min al nisa. Fear in the sight of men is the love of things they covet. Number one, nisa, women, well, Benin, then son, you know, I've got 11 sons, I can make my own football team. You know, how, how, 
You know, it makes me feel proud. I've got 11 sons, you know, my own football team, my own cricket team. Mm -hmm. Well, Benin and number three, well, Qanatir al Mukantarad min al Zahabi al Fidda and hoarded heaps of gold and silver and wealthy land and horses branded for excellence and all this. This is the list that is given in the Quran. Number one, women. The Quran says, the thing that allures man most on this earthly existence is woman. And I'm telling my Western friends that I don't have to prove that to you. I don't have to convince you. I said, you see, in my country, in the city of Durban, city of Durban, I think we'll end with this. We'll end with this. Okay? We'll end with this. In the city of Durban, there is a firm called Lucian Motors. They sell second-hand trucks. You know, lorries, lorries, trucks. We call them trucks here too? Trucks. We call them trucks. And on the trucks that they advertise, there's a woman in the bikini on top of the truck. Then G North, they sell farm implements. And on the tractors that they advertise, there's a woman in the bikini on top of the tractor. I'm asking these Westerners, I say, what has a woman in the bikini got to do with a second-hand truck or with a tractor? <laughs> Except the man. You see, the woman is being dangled, so he'll read the adverts. And BMW, I don't know you have BMWs here. It's a motor car, it's a motor car supposed to be a little better than the Mercedes-Benz. I'm not in the market for it. You see, I started with the Volkswagen Beetle, I did 120,000 miles, and I had to change for another Beetle, and another Beetle, and another Beetle. Then they stopped making the Beetle, you know the Volkswagen Beetle. They started the Golf, so I had to buy Golf number one, Golf number two. I'm still not in the market for a BMW, but I'm forced to read this advert. In my newspaper, I see a BMW motor car and with a woman in the skimpy, skimpiest of bikini, what you call the tanga, you know the G-string. She, <laughs> she's standing in front of the motor car and it's, it's written at the bottom, test drive her now. I'm asking, I'm asking, the woman of the car, the woman is buying the car, and the her is underlined, test drive her now. I said, look, this is what you're leading yourself to. This is, the Westerner, he sells his mother, his wife, his daughter, his wife is a star, and she's been mangled on the screen, simulating rape, and they, they enjoy it. You, you enjoy your wife being simulated. It's not real rape. But you know, it's simulated, you can see everything about it. She's being raped, your mother, your wife, your daughter. And you enjoy, your wife is a star. So, sick, sick. No, Alhamdulillah, praise be to God, we haven't come to that sickness yet, we Muslims. We try, we try to keep away from it. This is your pleasure, your privilege. We have no right to force you. But we say, you are playing with fire, my child, and you're going to pay the price. You're paying the price now, and you will pay the price. <laughs>